But I feel extremely fortunate. In our most vulnerable moments, we often can't imagine the silver linings to come. I think all the time how lucky I am. Nearly three years ago, White Bear Lake Police Captain Dale Hager suffered a stroke at his work desk. Worst case scenarios racing through his mind. As soon as I got up, I fell right under the desk right here. He was fortunate, though, to have first responders recognize his signs and give him immediate care. Um, I know I benefited from having a stroke inside a public safety building. It was convenient. <laughs> if you're ever going to have a stroke, that's the place to have it. That quick response, along with the doctor who treated him, saved his life. He made a real life or death decision for me, um, and he had to make it, you know, on the spot. He made the right call. Since that moment, you know, I, I've just kind of, he and I have developed a, a bit of a friendship. Hager says this quick recovery made him realize how lucky he is, if not mixed with some feelings of guilt. But I kind of had survivor's remorse a little bit, you know, like I just felt, I felt guilty that I got out of my stroke <clears throat> relatively harm free and uh, other people aren't so lucky. In an effort to give back, he joined the American Heart Association's board, helping them with a campaign this summer to educate people on the importance of administering CPR during a suspected opioid overdose. Well, the folks at American Heart Association, they have an unbelievable staff that works very diligently to try to get this message out, and they have been getting this message out. We've reached out to many public safety partners uh, in areas that we feel like there are a, a lot of folks um, of high risk of having an opioid overdose um, and those people obviously that live in that community. In the past several decades, the CPR model has moved away from giving breasts in the hopes of appealing to more people. They kind of found that people were apprehensive about doing CPR because they had to put their mouth on somebody else's mouth to give rescue breaths, right? And so the leaders of the CPR world, which I'm not one of, um, decided uh, maybe a couple decades ago What's the most important part of CPR? It's chest compressions. Make sure that you start that heart beating. But breasts are what overdose victims may need most, especially considering their age. According to the Minnesota Department of Health, 15 to 34 year olds had the greatest number of ER visits for opioid involved overdoses in 2020. One of the points for the American Heart Association's uh, message here is that rescue breaths would be nice and, and it would help, especially with those younger folks who who aren't having a bad problem, a hard time with their heart, they're having a hard time with the breathing. Hager says he appreciates the work and advocacy of the American Heart Association, educating the public on stroke and heart health. It's one of the many positive takeaways of his stroke. It's why he shares his story, hoping it may help others. It's a success story, right? It, it, I turned out okay, and I think people like to see that when people turn out okay, like you can have a stroke and you can come back from it. Three years later, people are coming up to me and talking to me, and I'll give them just a little information that I know from my story, and they'll go, oh, you know, I didn't know that. And, and they didn't know that about strokes or whatever. And, um, and I think that's great, right? Because especially if they're maybe a, a little bit older folks, and I can tell them a little bit more about uh, signs and symptoms and recognition of a stroke. And, uh, makes me feel great that maybe that's going to make a difference in somebody's life that they know as well, if not their own.